Lucy Glow, take two. Okay, we have an Apple review today, an actual commercial Apple. I've been trying to get my hands on this. This is Lucy Glow. I finally got a couple uh, to try. This is a red flesh Apple that's new on the market. It's pretty recent and I've heard mixed reviews. Some people say it's super good. Some people say it's mediocre. Um, we're gonna find out how at least these two are. And I do have one of my own red fleshed apples to compare it to. Obviously, I wanna compare it to other red fleshed apples I know, including my own seedlings. However, I don't have a um, specimen of the best red flesh seedling that I've grown. If I had enough of them, it would probably be in season right now, maybe. But uh, anyway, we're gonna see what this thing tastes like. I have mixed feelings about this. I kinda of want it to be really good, but I kinda of want my seedlings to be way better. So we'll just see which is which. I picked through the bin of these apples and they were really rough looking. Uh, very, very uneven surfaces, like all kinds of bumps and, and weird looking stuff. Uh, they just did not look very good. And I just kind of picked out two of the best ones that had the most of this pink blush because on the surface right off, this looks a lot like pink pearl or grenadine where this red color is actually the, the pink flesh showing through the translucent skin. That means that the more pink there is, the more red flesh there's gonna be. And usually if there's more red flesh development, you get more red flesh flavor. So yeah, it took me a while to pick these out. They were really quite uh, ugly actually. And they were pretty cheap. They were like $1.50 a pound. I thought they would be a lot more, um, but that could be because they were so ugly too. They're also pretty dented up and stuff. So it kind of looks like this has you know fairly poor red flesh development for what it probably could be now this points out a real problem with commercial red fleshed apples the red flesh typically uh, develops late in the ripening of the apple so to get a lot of red flesh development and therefore a lot of red flesh flavor because Part of the flavor you're tasting is actually that color, the anthocyanins, just like in a berry or a blueberry or, you know, a, another red type of fruit. So we want a lot of red flesh development. So if you have an apple that has to be picked early for commercial purposes, because they have to generally be picked unripe, and then they're stored in cold storage and ripened and then sold, you know, that could be a problem for getting the red flesh development. Yeah, that's pretty disappointing. What is that flavor? This first specimen is fairly disappointing. You know, in terms of like aiming for a modern, super crisp, uh, juicy texture, it falls a little short. It's uh, fairly coarse grained. It's, uh, it's kind of juicy, not particularly super crisp. Yeah. It also tastes like bananas more than it tastes like berries. I'm getting a little bit of red flesh flavor, but then like banana and like some spice flavor, like cinnamon or something. It's a very odd mix of flavors. Let's taste this other one. Okay, so in this one we have a little bit better red flesh development. Same texture, nothing to write home about, pretty average. Almost like leaning towards getting soft. Same flavor, plenty of juice though. It's fairly juicy. Same flavor, nothing to write home about to me. Like this flavor, it may have slightly more flavor than your average grocery store apple, but it doesn't distinguish itself in any way that's like sensational or particularly interesting. Okay, so let's try Appaloosa since I have one. I think this will be in decent condition, but you know, it could be on the way out. I've had this sitting on the counter for quite a while. Uh, level of red flesh development, maybe a little less than those. Um, I have seen this apple be pink all the way through, just solid deep pink, uh, but it didn't do that this year. I don't think this year is a very good year for red flesh development here. You'll notice that I cut off a piece, I took a bite, I took another bite, I'm like thinking, and then I picked up the, I just grabbed the apple and I started biting it. That's a good sign. That means that I wanna eat this apple. That was really not something I was thinking through. It just, it was just instinct, you know? 
this I wouldn't say this is a particularly good specimen of Appaloosa. Um, first of all, the just this year, I don't think it developed that well. It could have more flavor. The texture, I would say, is a slightly behind this, like a little bit worse. A little bit less juicy, a little bit more tannic, probably thicker skin. But this is the one, this, I wanted to eat this, and it's because of the flavor. And this isn't particularly a flavorful specimen. And a really flavorful specimen of this, it really just blows up in your mouth with all kinds of great fruit punch and berry flavors. So out of these two apples, I would rather eat uh, this one, although it has some faults uh, that make it not perfect. Now, my new red flesh apple, which I have an amazing name for, actually several, but I have one super good name. I have to look and see if it's available and stuff like that. So that apple would slay either one of these apples. I mean, if you put that apple in the grocery store next to this apple and someone bought both and tried them both, um, I can't imagine they wouldn't come back for my apple. You know, juicy, crisp, it's got a beautiful dark red skin, not this weird pale yellow, not very good looking thing with a little bit of pink showing through. Lots of red flesh flavor. Uh, it's just a good apple, a better apple than either one of these. So that's interesting. Uh, kind of happy about that, I have to say. I just, I'm just, just am. In coming years, there's going to be a lot more red flesh apples coming onto the market. Hopefully they'll be better than this one. This was supposed, I think this is Arlie's Red Flesh and Honey Crisp. Now, Arlie's Red Flesh may be from the outer line. Um, I'm not sure, but this really looks a lot like Grenadine or uh, Pink Pearl. It's got a lot of big white speckles, just like Grenadine. It looks a lot like Grenadine, so it probably is from the outer line, genetically speaking. Yeah, disappointing but encouraging. Man, if I could get this apple out, I have the best name for it ever. If I could get that thing patented and get it in grocery stores, Man, who knows, but there's so many obstacles to that. Like this may have been tested for keeping quality. Like if my, is my new apple gonna be able to be picked unripe, stored in cold storage, then like brought out and ripened and sold and have the red flesh development and the flavor and all that stuff. Lots and lots of questions uh, remain about that. But is it a better apple? Oh, hell yeah, it's better apple. I'll bet this at its very best uh, still won't compare to my new red fleshed apple, which is called, I'm not gonna tell you, yet.